Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, and good morning to you. Before uh, I start with my presentation, I just wanted to extend again my thanks uh, to the organizers, to all the partners in this uh, project, and also to the city of Vienna to have organized such a splendid ceremony yesterday evening. I did enjoy it. Uh, I would like to again congratulate the winners, um, the Moore River uh, authorities or projects, uh, but obviously also the other two who have done a very good job in getting uh, into the round of last three finalists. But now this morning uh, we are turning to more some policy orientated issues and I'd like to give you some brief overview. I have no slides um, because I thought uh, I didn't want to go into sort of too technical and uh, legal issues but rather give you an issue of um, the EU's and especially also DG Environment's commitment to protect our rivers and to restore them, uh, and also about the role of green infrastructure, uh, which can play an important role in the implementation of our EU Water Framework Directive. And this year's conference obviously provides uh, an excellent platform for promoting good practices. I said that already yesterday. Um, we are putting here also the emphasis uh, to, on the integrated approach across all sectors and across EU and national policies. Uh, that's very important and I think that uh, the finalists yesterday really are a shining example of how uh, this was done and how the past years where river alteration has uh, resulted in quite a number of negative environmental but maybe also economic and social effects have overcome these obstacles and uh, have tried to turn it around uh, to some more positive uh, future uh, work of, of which we can soon see uh, the benefits. However, even if we have such good examples, uh, we know that these uh, practices are not very widespread yet. And it is clear from our assessment that uh, we did in 2012, and that is known under the name of the EU Water Pr Blueprint, that on present trends, about half of EU waters will not achieve the good status by 2015. And this is, as you also know, a requirement of the Water Framework Directive. The blueprint pointed out at the time that there is a need for better implementation and increased integration of water policy objectives into other policy areas, especially when we look at agriculture, land use planning, and also the funding policies of EU and national governments. Last year, the Commission adopted also a policy paper, which is called Green Infrastructure, enhancing Europe's natural capital. This includes a strategy for encouraging the use of green infrastructure and for ensuring that uh, the enhancement of natural processes becomes a more systematic part of our policies and especially of spatial planning. As we all know, green infrastructure are based uh, on nature, of solutions and nature, and they use nature to provide ecological, but also economic and social benefits. For instance, instead of building walls for flood protection, green infrastructure solutions uh, would be that uh, increasing the function of wetlands so that they can absorb the excess of water from heavy rain. So natural water retention measures are green infrastructure for water. And their main focus, obviously, is to enhance water retention capacity of aquifers, soil, and ecosystems with a view to improve their status and therefore very important for achieving the objectives of a water framework directive. And we have examples that include restoration of riparian areas, wetlands, flood plans, as all being measures that can prevent the pressures that come from agriculture, from floods. And we want to promote the uptake of natural water retention measures and facilitate the integrated approach. And therefore, the Commission is finalizing, together with the member states and stakeholders, 
the policy document under the Common Implementation Strategy of the Water Framework Directive, which is a network of um, EU and national uh, authorities uh, that starts to implement the Water Framework Directive on a day-to-day -day basis. And in doing so, uh, we believe that we will raise awareness uh, targeting also water managers, decision makers at all levels, national, regional, and local levels. And this policy document is adopted, uh, or is foreseen to adopt it in the very near future when we have our water directors meeting with the national authorities next month in Rome. And in the elaboration of this document, we have also launched a pilot project on not natural water retention measures. This provides practical recommendation and also tools uh, for promoting best practices. A session, I believe, was devoted to this project on the first day of the conference, and it has presented the results and shared the lessons learned. A particular, again, on the need for policy integration across the different sectors. Based on the experience across Europe, it is clear that green infrastructure solutions are very often more cost effective, not only more environmentally beneficial, but also more cost effective, more resilient, and they bring long-term benefits more than those that come from artificial heavy infrastructure, even though I think we have to recognize that uh, there is sometimes has to be a combination of the two to be successful for example, in risk, uh, flood risk management. But uh, flood risk management provides a very good example of uh, the natural water retention measures uh, function, uh, because reducing human casualties and the damage to the economic activities uh, and environment, which is caused by these floods, are obviously a key objective of our 2015 flood risk management plans, which are required under the respective EU floods directive. We have only recently again seen the devastating effects uh, of the floods that um, we see in various parts of Europe. And this is also due to wrong planning decisions that, for example, have abolished uh, floodplains. And this always disastrous effects. Heavy infrastructure to bank up rivers has often been not only environmentally bad, but also a waste of money. And it comes with a damaging effect on soil erosion, deforestation, and other. So our focus should turn really from the heavy infrastructure measures that are often deployed by governments or by regional authorities to these more nature-based solutions. And so we need to invest in these measures to increase uh, the ecosystem services uh, that can come from floodplains, riparian woodlands, forests in mountainous areas, and barrier beaches and coastal wetlands. In fact, we have also learned there is very often high return on green infrastructure investments. Uh, we have, for an example, the Elbe restoration project uh, in Germany, where the benefits of shifting dikes and investing in floodplain adapted agricultural management, constructing also fish ladders, outweighed by far the costs by a factor of up to four. And there are other benefits, clearly, recreation, uh, flood protection, carbon benefits. Those had not been monetized by this project, but if we would do so, the cost-effectiveness ratio would be even higher. We've also seen other useful projects on river restoration, and uh, we as the EU have supported them sometimes through our LIFE program. For example, we have the UC4 LIFE project, which is improving river quality by raising water levels in a number of Swedish rivers and to create a more natural floodplain hydrology. And we have seen that as a result of these measures, biodiversity has increased. So river restoration is a tool for the achievement of good water status, and it helps also to meet the other objectives such as reduction of flood risk, biodiversity increase, adaptation to climate change, and disaster risk reduction. 
So the advantage is, as I've said already a couple of times, and I cannot stress uh, sufficiently how important this is in today's policies, uh, that the advantages are not only environmental, but also economically and socially um, there. So restoring rivers contributes, in our view, to economic development and an improved quality of life. But having said all these good things about what we are already doing, and without diminishing that, I also have to say that we are not doing nearly enough. At present, green infrastructure investments take place in a piecemeal and in a very isolated way. They fail to provide the full range of benefits that they could, in fact, deliver. Therefore, we need to further mainstream green infrastructure, also not only in the agricultural regional policies, but also in the funding policies. And here, I can point to the agreed reform of the co uh, community or common agricultural policy, which offers some opportunity for this, because now under the new financial framework that ranges from 2014 this year to 2020, we have uh, a big envelope that either via through rural development programs or regional development programs can effectively support uh, such measures uh, that we have and are, talk, uh, are being talking about. We need to uh, make sure that uh, in these plans that are supposed to be submitted to the Commission in terms of partnership agreements or in the way of operational programs by member states, that they actually include such measures. There is quite an envelope, financial envelope, that is devoted to environmental um, investments, including in the water sector. But we find in our assessments of these programs just too often that uh, member states, and going further down from the national to the regional and the local level, that first of all, many authorities are still not aware that this funding does exist, and uh, therefore they have uh, not seized the opportunity to ask for these funds, which is really uh, somehow a waste. We try from our side to alert the authorities uh, after we've made the assessment, and if we see that there is no link uh, to these, um, uh, to, the, to have the funding used in, in the regional, local, and national programs. But in the end, obviously, it has to be at the member state level that it is decided, because we, from our, uh, from our part, are not saying you have to do that. No, we wait for the member states to say we would like to do that and we require your help. So we are paying particular attention to the inclusion of green infrastructure in these partnership agreements uh, and the operational programs that we are currently negotiated with member states to identify these funding priorities for the next seven years. That's a long uh, period uh, that we should not let go and leave uh, without um, making sure that we can make progress in the area of natural water retention measures. Despite this positive news about uh, the financial uh, instruments and funds, there are never enough funds, uh, and in the current economic context uh, also we have to recognize uh, that uh, there needs to be other funds uh, that we probably need to get hold of. Uh, we are uh, also saying that uh, partnerships with uh, private business is something that is worthwhile, that we should seek. And especially uh, in this context, I would point out the role of innovation to drive economic uh, growth and also environmental uh, benefits. So innovation should be seen here in the wider sense, not just in the technological sense, but also in the sense of managing and governing our natural resources. A partnership approach is actively promoted now by the European Commission, where the public and the private sector and research institutes work together to drive the development and implementation of innovative solutions. 
I'd like to point to the European Innovation Partnership on Water. Uh, we have next week in Barcelona a big event uh, on this where we come together and where we are discussing all the work that has been done over the next last two years since we initiated this European Innovation Partnership on Water. There are also a number of action groups here that are directly relevant to the work that you are doing. Uh, and I think there could be also more links maybe with the partners that we have in the European Partnership and these organizations present here. On the 5th of November, there will also be a new call for new action groups through which um, ho we hope that more of these groups that are also directly related to, for example, to river restorations will be created. So I can only encourage you to look at the respective websites uh, and see whether there are any opportunities that you could seize. Now to sum up, I'm convinced that a better use of our natural capital will underpin many opportunities for sustainable development in the future. And the key to get support for the natural water retention measures is firstly the recognition of their wider benefits, environment, economically, social, the exploitation of synergies between the different policies objectives, whether it's agriculture, uh, land use, planning, also those with private and social interests, and finally, the mainstreaming of these objectives under the different funds and financial instruments that we have at our hand. And in addition, the success of the green infrastructure solution depends on decisions that are made mainly at national, regional, and local level. We have to mobilize the experience and the results at these levels. We need increased awareness and capacity building in the member states. I have tried to summarize very, summarize very briefly what we as the European Commission are doing to address some of these uh, challenges and where we see the opportunities uh, to make progress. I'd like to conclude by inviting you all to exploit every opportunity to explain at all levels, including policymakers, that the protection of our rivers is a sound economic and environmental investment for all of society, and uh, that the uptake of green infrastructure can provide multiple benefits that we should not discard. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.